the elbow to the submission. It also gives you what I call an invisible underhook submission. You guys probably know what I'm talking about if you remember this. Um, when I do the cradle. So I'm gonna establish the front headlock properly, this is review. I'm grabbing here, wrist control. Now if I grab this wrist, then I'm not gonna cross my feet because I haven't really established much of a top right now, right? So I'll circle out and now I have the correct foot forward without ever crossing my feet. So that's important to know. And once you go on this hand, now what's also important is what? Ring finger, I'm sorry, index finger and thumb at the lowest parts towards the pad on the wrist. It fits in that perfect. And then I go one, two, three, controlling the pinky pad. Now he can't do this, is it? But if I grab here, I have nothing. That's the difference between wrist control and true wrist control. And when I say wrist control, you guys know what I mean. I need you to get, it's kind of like hand fighting, right? It's not the same, the hand fighting is what? Getting here to work, this is hand fighting. This is proper wrist control. See the difference? I don't need busy hands. My hands need to be, it's wrestling one-on-one, -on -one, busy hands. If your hands are controlling something, then they have a free one. If your hands are controlling and busy at all times, then they have a free hand. It's that simple. They have a free hand, I promise. So if I'm here like this, right? I go now, I can snap that collar tight, can't I? But the palm has to be what, always? Turned out. Do you remember why? It's a backup plan to what? Double wrist lock. So if I'm pushing in, I'll push in. Now this creates a frame, it goes straight down the middle. My collar tie can't be weak. If I go here, I'll coach Dale, you know what to do. Do it. No, just do it. Oh, mm -hmm. Your right hand, just pull it off. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> just go get it. Pull off. There you go. If you can reach my fingertips, it's gone. It's, it takes no time. So when you grab your collar tie, I need to, kind of like we're talking about the chin strap, get to the ear. I need to get to lined up to the jaw and then do that. If his head's not turned on a collar tie, you don't have a good collar tie. Because I need him miserable in every tie -off. If I'm not breaking his posture in a tie it's not your tie -off. You don't have it. You don't have it. It may be a little bit more yours than his, but it's not a good tie -off. So I go wrist control, turn out. Just clap that collar tie, and I'm going all the way over, guys, all the way over to the jaw if I can. And where's my elbow go? So let me just do the foot thing, it's to the side. Now my foot's proper. Crank it down the middle. This sets not only a frame, but he has to get past this to shoot. He has to get past this to work, right? He can't just drive through this. He can shrug it off and switch to a Russian, but that's also going to expose his leg. Or I better what? I had to switch gears too, right? So being here now, I push in. When he pushes back, I never, ever snap to this side line. That's one, or two, I'm going at frequent flyer miles, okay? Can I do it sometimes? Now I can do it sometimes with what? If I have a Russian tie and he pulls his leg back, that head goes down, this would, I can't reach over, what can I do? We did yesterday. Uh -oh. Bam! You've got to club him first. It's, it's perfectly legal in amateur wrestling. Why wouldn't you do it catch? I'm not, you can't make a fist, but I can club him, his, all, ram his head right through the mat, got it? You've got to club him on that side. Here, I don't have to, why? It's like a Venus flytrap over here. It's set, and I can wrap it, and I have his hand too. So I'm pushing in, that frame is nice, he pushes back, I throw the front headlock, and I keep the wrist. Otherwise, I would have thrown him on my leg, he knows it's back, right? Sure. When I close the arm, I'm gonna go for a power choke, so the palm is gonna be up like it would be for the S-grip. Okay, the S-grip will be here, right? That's why I let go of the wrist, same difference. I keep the wrist, so I chop here, make the fist palm up still. Power choke grip, it's a thumbless grip. My head drops down, but the power choke does what? It flexes? This arm flexes like Popeye. This elbow does what? Across. And then I look back at my knees to close it. Now I have control of the proper front headlock. Got it? So I want to review how to set the front headlock first. Because if you can't do that, then nobody cares about the takedown because you ain't getting there. So to get the cradle off this, it's a simple takedown. It's not a high impact. Don't freak out. It's much safer to go for the front leg than it is for this. Because when you go there, and I've done videos on both of them, but this one is just, it's riskier for your partner. If you have a heavy person, it feels like a really busted cradle. It doesn't, it's not comfortable. So being on this side, when I push in, boom, he pushes back, snap, palm on the fist, power choke, right? Crank this, crank the elbows on my stern, it's here. Now watch my left hand. It comes over, low on the tricep. If I'm here, he can pull his arm up like a joke. If I go low on the tricep, pull your arm, it's not coming back out. My head stays low, got it? My head stays low. This is my arm. He can't get it out. I touch, he pulls what? There it is. I come through, all I'm gonna do is throw my leg through, and what? Over, now this is the fun part. There was no impact, right? This is what we call the invisible underhook. I go here, sit out, and he's already tapping. He's getting a little bit of his all choke weapon. Yeah, the choke. 100% choke. All right. Keep the arm. He's completely cut, he's getting choked by his own arm and shoulder. Okay, so again, I call that invisible underhook. You don't need it. But I'm sitting out like I would to be doing a cow catcher, right? 
So it's same, same concepts or principles as far as AKI cow catcher. So here, wrist control first, or always inside tie first at least. Don't go here, Dale's gonna kill me. He knows that. He'll be on me faster than anything. I'm getting too old to sprawl. I yeah, forget that noise. So I'm always in here, boom, as fast as I can. I'm gonna hit me with my shoulder as fast as I can. I go way on the outside. So wrist control, one, two, three on the pad. Turn it out now, slap that collar tie. I drive in, that's my friend. He pushes back, snap it, and throw that, guys. Throw it, you're not gonna hurt him. Throw it right, I'm on his karate right now. Close, palm up, right? Now I can let go of that hand. I grab the wrist, the one on the bottom. My power choke grip is it's a thumbless grip, not a full thumb, you won't bend it. Here, pull, elbow goes center, and pull back. Okay, now what? The hand switches down on the tricep. If I go to the elbow, it'll slip right out, go. That's why I keep telling you guys to grab the tricep. I grab tricep, dragon, no way. Now I put my head down nice and deep. Touch, he pulls that leg back, throw this leg through, sorry, throw the leg through, leg, and come over. You can keep the leg all you want, it doesn't help with the switch, you okay? Yeah. Okay, now, this is your invisible under rope. You wanna be here, right? Put your elbow on the ground, pin him, sit out, and get a little movement. He's tapping. I'm not gripping his neck, I don't need to crank, I'm sealing the choke. Is that a little diaphragm thing? A little bit diaphragm, yeah. You should be a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah. Mostly choke though, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's good. I mean, we're shutting down the air, and we're getting the blood choke too. Cool? Sick. Just one more time. <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little weird because this knee's completely gone. They're both gone, but this one I blew completely out of one of the camps, so that's why I'm kinda like, just, just go. Like I was like, I was like, just, just go. Just throw it. <laughs> one time I throw it, it's just gonna go through the wall. Okay. Like, yeah, can somebody hand me my leg? So I wrist control. Collar tie, push in, he pushes back, and snap, lock, lock. You know what? Close the door, for God's sake. I see this all the time. It's comical. There's nothing here. He can do anything he wants to me. Even with the hands together. Oh, stop, we can't do this. I gotta be here. Totally different. He can still do his switch here, standing switch, easy. Line. Turn your head. And go. Throw your right arm and, and switch. Turn your chin. Throw your right arm. But if I have my door closed on the catch drawing headlock, you'll see it in Greco and freestyle as well. Freestyle comes from catch. Greco influences catch. If I have my hands together now, and I look down, there's no way you can even turn his head. Right. He can't, because he has to turn his head this way, because that's the shape of the hole. And there is no shape once my head is down. It's, it's locked. He can't turn his head. Understand? That's why I say close the door. You don't have a front headlock. I'm looking straight back. My hand slides down to the base of the tricep, your distal head, which is the very small head of the bottom, trying to get hooked around. I do what now? I step in, boom. That sets this across, right? The relationship detail. Move my step, help me do what? Open this step up for here, right? So my leg goes through, so does mine. It goes through, hook, over. I keep the arm. I'm not trying, I'm not even heavy, I'm just keeping the elbow. You do it, aren't you? Yeah, great. Now what? This is why pinning is so important. It's not about 1902, three count pins. I drive in, throw my invisible underhook, sit out, just pull a little bit here. So I move what? A little bit. You guys got it? Yes, sir. Get some directions. Let's get this in, please. Okay? Remember to use the space. We're doing a takedown. We got both rooms. Please use it accordingly. Let's go. One, two, three.